Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer. Today is Wednesday. <laughs> and I just live in this shirt now. I'm just, if you watched yesterday's video, I just live in it now. This is life. <laughs> I'm filming on the same day, but seriously, I love this shirt. Anyway, today's Wednesday, but usually I show you Monday makes. I show you what I've been making for the past seven days. Um, because I'm filming this on Monday, these makes still have been made in the past seven days. All of them. They were all made within a seven day period. It's a lot of little things because that's all I had time to do. But there's a lot of little things that I've made. Um, so today, since it's Wednesday and not Monday makes, we're going to do what you've been making. <laughs> what, what you've been making Wednesday. What you've been making Wednesday. Okay, something like that. <laughs> So, to start, I got a cup of... Did you already fed up? Okay, cool, thanks. I had a cup of Dr. Pepper in my Garth Brooks cup. This cup is very old. It's from 2017, I think. <laughs> it's been around a while, but hopefully it stays around because I use it frequently. Alright, so what have I been making? A mess. I've been making a mess. <laughs> I'm making, I've been making good use of my cotton yarn, mostly. Um, I made two, I'll show you the two bigger things first, and then we'll work on the cotton. Um, <clears throat> all of this has been made in the past seven days. I will tell you a little secret about me. When I have anxiety, or I'm stressed about something, I crochet faster, because the crochet calms down the crazy. <laughs> so... Um, I was having a lot of anxiety about um, being away from the kids for a whole weekend and about going to a concert because it had been a while since we've been to a concert and just about a lot of things. And so the crochet kicked up to kick down the crazy. So with that being said, <laughs> this little cute project, I started, I, well, I got the idea when my sister was here because I was working on the by Stitchwell bag tutorial and because of that. I, while I was making that, I was like, oh, this bag would be so cute in watermelon. And I happen to have watermelon yarn. This is the Premier Yarns Fruit. This, this is this specifically is the Sweet Roll Fruits. Um, Premier Yarns, if you don't know, has two different lines of fruity yarns. They have the Worsted Weight <laughs> Fruits, which is the Sweet Roll Fruits, which are on uh, this shelf right here this one is sweet roll fruits that one is sweet roll fruits this one is sweet roll fruits <laughs> so we have plum pink grapefruit banana it's all up there i had one skein of watermelon this is not cute okay it is stuffed with other things that i have made so that you see that it's actually a bag um the idea from this kind of came from the by stitchable bag um this was so much fun to make now i'm going to tell you I, my two-year knitting anniversary was last week, which means after two years of trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing, two years ago today, I finally learned to knit. <laughs> Not today, last week. Um, so two years of trying and failing and then two years, so four years ago, I started trying to learn how to knit. I tried several times through the pandemic. And then finally, two years ago, last week, I learned how to knit. But I'm a very basic knitter. Um, I can knit, I can purl, I can yarn over, I can do some increases, I can do some decreases. I know a couple of different bind-offs. I know a couple of different cast-ons. Um, I have the biggest thing that I am working on now is a blanket, but I've also made a shawl. But a lot of the things I knit are small because knitting takes a very long time and knitting is very painful to the arthritis that lives in my fingers so i don't make real big items i want to make a tank top uh, but i'm scared to make a garment for myself i'm scared of getting invested in another big project but you know anyway so i'm constantly learning new things about knitting i am very um I, I'm not, I, I'm, I mean, I know how to knit, but I'm not like a huge knitter. I don't knit a lot because it is very painful to my hands. So when I made this bag, I wanted to make it bottom up like the by Stitchwell bag. And Mr. Cinnamon is texting me. 
I wanted to work center out, which I've never done. <laughs> I've always made my hats brim up and then decreases. I've never made one top down. I don't make my socks toe up. I always make them cuff down. So I don't, I've never knew how to knit center out. And I was kind of scared. I also, when I knit in the round, I knit in the round from a circle, not from out in out. So with that being said, I did some Google research. I did some video watching and I learned how to knit from the center out. And um, I will try to find that video that taught me the basic idea. And then I just, I worked in the round as if I was making crochet in the round. So I increased the same way I would if I was crocheting in the round. So with all that, without too much information, this was not color controlled. It just so happened to start at the reddest part and it makes almost a perfect watermelon slice, which made me so excited. <laughs> I was so excited and I was going around and around and I'm learning and I, I had to start with DPNs, you know, double point needles. And so I was going around, I was like, oh, the seeds are there. And then I was like, oh, the rind is there. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to get to the rind and then we're going to start working just in the round without increases to go up the length of the bag. So I kind of planned it out so that it looked like a slice of watermelon on the bottom of the bag, which worked out perfectly. And so I stuffed it so you guys could see because when it's not stuffed, it's not as obvious as it is when it's got something stuffed in there. And then this is what the yarn works up like. It's different shades of red followed with some seed speckles. And then you get the white of the rind and then two different colors of the rind on the water. I think this bag is so cute. And then I just went until I thought I was almost out of yarn and I did some, um, some, Sorry about that. I had to go switch batteries. <laughs> and then I had to charge my other two batteries because I'm plowing through them today because yesterday's video was so long. <laughs> I went through two full batteries. Okay, so then I got to this part and I did, um, I think I did knit two together to create a little bit of a gap. And what I should have did is yarn over and then knit two together, which would have made a bigger hole. But I just yarned. I knit two together and then I added an extra one on the end. I think I did it backwards. But like I said, I'm not like really, really into knitting. I don't have all the knowledge with knitting. So I just did what I could. I made the drawstring here thinking I would only have one more repeat before the bag ended. And that would be a perfect like rim. I had more yarn than I thought I had left in the skein. So it ended up being a lot bigger section here, but it doesn't matter to me. It's still a cute little sack. And I made the drawstring out of different yarn because I ran out of this yarn. I put a ribbing around the top just to give it a little bit of extra like strength up there. And then much like the bistitual bag, I made a, and I just crocheted the handle. I made a ribbed lay flat handle it just lays flat on the bag until you draw the drawstring and then the handle flops down. I can hang that from a doorknob or a hook or carry it that way. Um, but yeah, so I had a lot of fun making this little bag. <laughs> it's super stretchy because it's knit. Like knit is so, so super stretchy and it's such a cute little sack. It's so cute. So in here, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I've made that I will pull out of the bag and show you in a minute. <laughs> See, when there's not something in there, it's not so obvious that that's a, well, maybe a watermelon slice on the bottom. It is so cute. It's so cute. So while I was making this, when I got to about here, it was, I laid it on the bed so that I could do something. I think I was putting little man to bed or something. And I was laying there. I was like, that kind of looks like the top of a beret. And so I was thinking, okay, bear with me. This is going to look really ridiculous. I was thinking, how cute. Now, I know it's way too big. But how cute would this be as a little watermelon beret? <laughs> so it's not a beret. It's a giant bag. But I was like, oh, that would be so cute as a beret. So now I need to order some more watermelon because I need a watermelon beret in my life. And I'm going to knit it from the center out. And I don't know if it's going to turn out. 
but I think it will be super cute. And if not, I just make myself a watermelon hat. <laughs> so we should turn it around so we're not looking at the... I'll just make a watermelon hat. But I might order a couple of skeins. I'm so in love with the watermelon. I love watermelon, guys. I love watermelon. Watermelon is my favorite of all of the fruits. Watermelon and blueberries and the combination of the two of them together. <laughs> and I didn't realize, I mean, I've always liked watermelon. I put salt on my watermelon and sometimes a little bit of chili powder. Um, I didn't realize how much I loved watermelon until I got pregnant with a little man and that's all I wanted to eat the whole pregnancy was watermelon and blueberries. And so yeah, I, I love watermelon. I even have a distributor. <laughs> There's this guy, he's got North Carolina plates but we're not close to North Carolina. So I don't know if he brings his watermelons up from North Carolina or he just is from North Carolina originally. But he has his pickup truck and he parks on the corner down on the other side of the freeway. His watermelons are so good. They are so good. He has other produce too, but like his big thing is watermelons. So we go down there and get some watermelons. I always tell the guy, pick me out a good one. <laughs> just pick me out a good one. He climbs up in the bed of his truck. He, he flips them over and he looks at them and, and he taps on them and makes sure. And I don't know what he does. I don't know how he knows, but he always picks me the perfect watermelon. And my watermelon has to have seeds because the seedless ones don't have any flavor. I don't know why people even bother with the seedless. Yes, they're smaller. I get it. Can't eat a big giant watermelon by yourself. Most people anyway. I can't either. I, I'd be sick if I ate the whole thing. But like, you know, I want a good big seeded watermelon. So, and then <laughs> I made this. This is the Bernat. Do I have the label still? There's so much. There's so much on my desk. I need to show you guys. That's not it. Okay, so I bought this yarn at Hobby Lobby. It's Bernat Casa, I think. It is Bernat Casa. Um, it is different types of yarn all together in one ball. So this gray here is really soft gray is like um, chenille yarn. It's like the Bernat, not the Bernat. I mean, yes, Bernat has it. I don't, I don't know what it's called in Bernat. It's like the Parfait from Premier. So this gray part right here is really soft chenille yarn. And then it goes into this god awful blanket yarn. I hate blanket yarn. This is like Bernat blanket yarn. This is my least favorite part. Worked up, it's soft and squishy. I just don't like the feel of it working with it. And then this is some like fur. <laughs> it's like straight up fur yarn. And then this right here is exactly like homespun. So we got the chenille blanket fur and then homespun and then it goes back to the chenille, etc. Okay. Nancy from She's Got Yarn 2, um, made her granddaughter a blanket out of this yarn and she was showing it and I bought this because I was going to take out the black part for the spider that I made for little man and I thought this black fur would be perfect for bugs but then when I saw Nancy's blanket I was like oh I need to make something out of that and I only have I only had one ball <laughs> so I was like I knew it was gonna be something small I was like I'll make a pillow well I had an old, this is an old, inside here is just an old regular size pillow that I folded in half. <laughs> because when you get pillow, like cheap pillows specifically, I have a lot of cheap pillows in the house that I buy just in case somebody needs an extra pillow they spend the night. I've always had to have that. And so I got a lot of pillows that are old and flat. They're like flat. <laughs> so you fold it in half, you have an actual decent sized pillow. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start and I'm just going to go the width of the pillow sideways excuse me um and then i'm gonna try to make it long enough to wrap around and connect i didn't have enough yarn for that <laughs> i have enough yarn to wrap around the whole pillow so i had this yarn which is sparkly and i had this yarn which i used for well, I bought this for the bugs. Remember, I bought this and this yarn from Scrap RVA with my sister. I have scrap pieces over there still. Um, this is, this one I actually have the label for. This is Peyton's Allure. It's a furry yarn. It is so stinking soft. It feels so good. 
So I used up that. <laughs> this is the whole ball of this. And I used up some of the black sparkle yarn to make a bigger section so that I could close off the pillow. So I had a whole pillow. And then I used some of the black sparkly yarn for just to put like a little edge on it. And then I closed it up. This took me a couple hours, if that. But now I have, because you like I said in yesterday's video, I have I have I have spine problems. I have arthritis in my back. And when I'm sitting specifically at the desk for a tutorial, it hurts really bad to sit at this desk. So now I got a nice back pillow. This pillow is actually gonna stay in this room. It feels really good on my spine. It helps keep me more upright instead of hunching over, which I have known to do, which causes more back pain. So that's the number two thing that I made, which I don't need it today because we're filming, not editing, and not doing. So I made that. I really, really love this yarn for a pillow. I could see this being a nice blanket. Um, lots of sensory things, like it just feels good. Like some parts are really soft, some parts are, like when you rub it, it's a sensory thing. Really like that pillow. And I think it looks fancy, bougie, special. <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Cinnamon. Once again, I'm charging my batteries because I got a feeling I'm gonna kill this battery too. Um, Mr. Cinnamon was tired earlier, but not anymore. I asked him how he was doing today because I'm exhausted. Oh, dang it. All right, so, <laughs> last Thursday, I showed you guys my pia pia video was about um premier home cotton <laughs> and i showed you guys i talked about all the different things that you can make with premier home cotton well since i dug it out because my cotton stays in this cabinet down here mostly but there's also these plastic bins have home cotton in them like i have cotton mostly over there okay so since i was down there digging it out to see which one I made first on the video I think I, th I think I actually <laughs> one of these was the the um, the PL video I showed a quick tutorial how to make a coaster it's just a half double crochet coaster it works perfectly for my coffee mugs and I wanted coasters in here because I am constantly having tea or some beverage at the desk while I'm working and I spill a lot. I'm 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 very prone to klutz like behavior. <laughs> I'm constantly knocking, spilling, um dropping you guys know I drop something in almost every video. I'm constantly I got butterfingers, like I and I these because they're cotton, they make a really good non slip surface on my desk and they clean up a quick mess if I spill because they're cotton they're easily machine washable so I made one of these in just a circle let me my light is coming across kind of blue let me just warm it up a little bit because this is pink well, that's better all right so I made it in this and then while I had this out I was like all right let's make some more so I made a flower one which is basically the same thing, except I did a shell border. No big deal. And this one, this one was double crochets and a shell border. And then from there, I made another circle one. This one is got an open center and it's double crochets. Made another one, double crochets with a shell border to match the first one. <laughs> this one is half double crochets with a shell border. Then I ran out of the pink. <laughs> so I grabbed this colorway. Actually, no. I, I wanted to use up all of the pink. I had three balls of this, so I wanted to use it all up because it had been sitting around a while. So, actually I made this first. I have not finished any of these by weaving in the ends. And I have not put a button on this dish towel yet. Um, this is 
If you've done my dish towel before, which I have two different tutorials for a dish towel, this is basically the basic dish towel except I changed up the stitches. So I will link the regular dish towel below and I will tell you that this is made with half double crochets. And then this is the, um, I don't remember what the stitch is called. You double crochet, skip one, and double crochet into the next stitch, and then put this double crochet into the stitch that you skipped, and then you just keep doing that across. And so that's the stitch for this towel. And then I just need to add a button. Cute little dish towel. I made that. This took one and a half, one and a half of those little skeins. And I had a half a skein left, so I made a matching washcloth with a hook to hang it up to dry. So this is the same stitch. I made that. So then I ran out of the pink because that was all those were three balls. So I had the same yarn in the blue and purple version. So this is the pink, this is the blue and purple. And so I made, <laughs> um, well actually, I'll show that last. I'm trying to think of what order. I started wanting to make um, washcloths because I'm running low because Mr. Cinnamon abuses them. He uses the heck out of them and then throws them away. Instead of putting them in the washer and dryer like they belong. He acts like they are disposable. So a lot of them just disappear. I think the kids do the same thing. It drives me nuts. And I've yelled at all of them. Stop throwing my stuff away. I worked hard on those. They're washable. So <laughs> I made this. And this was following a pattern. And I, if I can find the pattern or the video for this, I will link it. But this is way bigger than I normally make for a dish towel or a hand towel or a washcloth. But I followed the pattern exactly. Um, I will try to link all the patterns that I have for these because quite a few of these are off patterns. So this is, I don't remember what this was called, but it's very pretty. It's um, got the, this really nice texture on this side. And then the back just looks almost like um, a version of the granny square a little bit. I mean, it's just a cool washcloth, but if I make this again, I'm going to make it smaller by like a lot <laughs> because that's the size I like. That's a good couple inches off. And this took one and a half balls because it's got this extra stitch on there. It was a lot of fun. It was pretty easy to make. I will link that below if I can find it. So I made that one. And then at this point I'm fully invested in the, I'm fully invested in the yarn, the, the cotton yarn. I was like, all right, let's do this. Let's really, I, I, I wanted something that I had to concentrate on other than the anxiety I was feeling. I wanted something that needed my focus. And so that's why I chose to do patterns. Because if I, if I need something that I'm just playing with, I don't do patterns, but if I need something I need to focus on for anxiety or whatever reasons, um, I will grab patterns. And these patterns, not that one, and well yeah and that one okay yeah that one too all right i've had these patterns printed off i don't know what i do with my notebook i have a binder filled with patterns some of them i've made before one of these washcloths i have made before um, it comes in a set of three and again if i can find the download i believe it was a ravelry download i will link that below because i like to link who i'm using so that you know but I started off, I wanted to make this dishcloth. <laughs> this is um, this is one of the patterns of the set of three that I have that I will try to link below. And I wanted to make this, and so I started it, and when it got to this big, I was like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's just cute, it's pretty. It's basically the center of that. So I stopped at this point because it was pretty, and these are like bowls or popcorns or something. Um, I did it differently than she does it. She did either four or five double crochets. So she did the first double crochet and kept that loop on. And then she did, I think, three or four double crochets after that, completed them, 
and then the last double crochet she didn't complete and then connected the two and to me that was more complicated than just doing a popcorn stitch which is where you don't complete the three and then you pull through all the loops so I chose to do it that way slightly different doesn't really make a difference aesthetically um but that's how I made this but when it got to this point I was like it's so pretty it looks like a little snowflake or a flower and so I was like this can be even with those popcorn stitches this can be a coaster my cup fits very easily on there flatly it doesn't like wobble around um or it could be a Christmas ornament or it could be a little face scrubby but it was too cute to make the entire washcloth so I I did that and then I was like, okay, now I need to make the whole washcloth. So now this is what the whole washcloth looks like. Again, it has the bobble star in the middle. It's not super complicated. It's an easy pattern, but it looks very pretty. It looks, you know. And there were three, there was three washcloths in that pattern. I don't remember if this was one of, I don't think this was one of them. That, I'll show that later. I don't think that was one of them. I think I only did two. So, no. I have all... No, I did have two. I'm confusing myself. I think I only did two of the three patterns. Because the third pattern was really close and similar to this one. But I liked that one better. So then I did this one. And this one doesn't lay flat. I mean, it probably will when it's been used. But it was just... It was pretty and it was fun to work it has the same bobbly center or very similar one but it has more stitches in it which tends to stick out a lot more like it sticks out a lot and then this is like a pineapple the pattern is not super complicated but like I said it doesn't it does not lay flat <sighs> but it's very pretty it's almost too pretty to be a washcloth but it's going to be a washcloth or a dishcloth or something. It's going. To, it's definitely one in the kitchen. So I made that one. That's the second one out of the pattern. And then I remembered doing... Is this the right one? I remember doing a washcloth. I'm trying to remember. I think it was this one. This is a pattern on YouTube. I remember doing it and I didn't remember where the the tutorial was so I tried to remember and I remembered incorrectly but this is still pretty this was me trying to remember but it's totally different it's got it's totally different <laughs> this was this is the original that I was trying to do this is what I could remember and it's wrong but it's still pretty and this is going to hang up in the kitchen I made a little a little loop and then that is what that looks like so that's not a pattern at all and then I had little scraps left over so I made another coaster or a face pad or whatever you want to call that and then I found the pattern for this one which I will link below it is her name starts with a s s-i-e-m-s -S, I think something like that and this is a very pretty pattern. That's the front. Even the back is pretty. <laughs> this is a very pretty washcloth. Um, I would say it could be a trivet as well. But because there's polyester in these, they have a risk of melting with heat. So I don't recommend using Premier Home Cotton for, for like hot pads, trivets, um, anything like that. You can't make bowl cozies out of this because it, it will melt. The, the polyester part will melt. You need 100% cotton for those kind of things. And this is thick enough to be a trivet. And I believe that the pattern is to make a hot pad. Um, but this is going to be either a washcloth or it's going to be for my teapot to sit on or something like that. But it's really, really pretty. And this is the Premier Home Cotton Stripes. And then I finished with this. And I don't think that this was a pattern. It might have been a pattern. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this was a pattern or I don't know what this was, but I made that. And then, and then I wanted to find another pattern that I could use. And I was already upstairs in bed at this point, or I was on my way to bed or something. 
And I was like, okay, I want to make something else that involves cotton. Because I was getting ready to go to the concert. And I was nervous. And I was having anxiety. And I, there was so much on my mind. I wanted to just relax. Which is why there's so much cotton. <laughs> because, like, anxiety. that That's anxiety crochet. So I was like, okay, well, let me pull up some of my Crochet World magazines. Because I subscribed to this. I got a really good deal on it. I got two years for like $22 or something like that. Um, I don't use a lot of the patterns out of here because it's a lot of like doilies and stuff for skinny people, honestly. Like a lot of their patterns don't fit me. And this issue, which is August 2022, this is the most recent issue, is very much along the same lines where... The stuff that is in here is not stuff that I would use or make. I don't make a lot of crochet bags. Um, those are cute, but nah. And so I was like, okay, I'll make this. This is so pretty, right? So I got out my three colors and I started to read the pattern. And to me, it was almost incomprehensible what they were trying to say. It was so confusing to me. Not that the pattern is bad. I just could not. The pattern, I, I like did the first section, the first color, which is in the center. And this is supposed to be a hot pad. And I'm like, what, where am I supposed to put the crochet hook? They're talking about from the first row. I couldn't tell where the first row started and the second row started. And I was like, this is so confusing and I don't have the brain space to do this right now. So I frogged it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Let's see what else is in here. Now the first, when I first got this and I opened it, I thought all these patterns were ugly. Like a good majority of them were ugly. I didn't have any interest in making any of these. And I could not see a use for some of this stuff. And then I saw this one. And to me, the first time I saw it, I was like, that is so stupid. Why, why am I gonna make that? And they call it a charger. So they say, well, this says House of Blues table mat. Where did I get charger from? Something in here was called a charger. It's basically a placemat for your, your plate. Or it's for on your table. It's a placemat, okay? And House of Blue table mat. The yarn that they used is Premier Home Cotton. <laughs> I have plenty of it. And so I was like, okay, I've never crocheted a triangle before. I mean, I've made triangle shawls, but I've never, I've never done triangles. And this is triangles you sew together. So I was like, well, let's make a triangle and see how I feel about it. So these are the colors that I was going to or use for the other pattern. The really complicated one. This one. I picked out because these colors, picked out these colors because I don't have white. And so I was like, all right, I can, let's try we'll just do a triangle <laughs> so I picked the same colors and I got hooked on making these triangles I can make a triangle in like 10-15 minutes I can make this whole thing in a little over an hour and I thought it looked pretty when I was done it needs to be blocked because it just does <laughs> it doesn't lay perfectly flat if I lay it on a flat surface and I rub it really hard to heat it up it will lay flat but I'm definitely going to wet these and lay them out somewhere to dry so that they want to lay more in the shape that they're supposed to be. Um, but it's really pretty and I had a lot of fun making this and it helped me to relax to go to sleep and I was like, okay, that's cute. Like for underneath my plate on the kitchen table and then on the way driving to the concert, I brought only a couple of skeins of cotton because I was like, I'm gonna make another one of those. So on the drive, I made an all blue one because I had almost all of the colors that they have in the pattern. I already had these colors. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, since I already have most of those colors, um, I'll make a blue one and that can be Mr. Cinnamons, okay? So last night, well, yesterday, when we were driving home from the concert, Sunday, Sunday we're driving home from the concert. I was tired um, and I anticipated I was going to crochet and I was like, I'll just make another one of these. It'll be fine. 
and I crocheted just the center of the triangle and I was like I'm really really tired <laughs> I was so tired I could barely keep my eyes open and I don't generally sleep in the car <clears throat> I mean I gotta be really tired to sleep in the car I was exhausted and so I couldn't crochet on the way home so last night Sunday night I um I sat in the bed because I took a little nap on the couch even after I slept most of the drive home which I felt bad because I knew Mr. Cinema was tired too and usually I try to keep him alert and awake and I just could not I did not have the physicality to be awake <laughs> I came home sat on the couch I took another little nap and then I was like okay I need to go to bed so we went upstairs like really like at seven o'clock I was ready for to be asleep we went upstairs early went to bed early went to sleep early I slept so hard last night still tired but I, I didn't go right to sleep when we went upstairs because little man was very there was a storm going he's really scared of storms now um he just wanted and he missed me a lot and he kept saying mommy I'm so sad mommy I'm so sad and he was on the verge of crying and so I was like baby if you need to cry you can cry and then he started just his eyes welled up with them giant crocodile tears and I was like what is wrong and I think it's a lot school's getting ready to come back his cousin's getting ready to go back to college and he has gotten really close to her this summer um my sister and the baby's just left and he's really missing adora adora is like his best friend she idolizes lucas she thinks he is the coolest kid in the world and she just wants to do everything he's doing and to him that's unusual because hit some of his issues you know and he just really he he loves people he loves being around people and he like when he gets connected to people because it's hard for him to connect to people it is a deep connection you know and so his little heart was broken last night he's like he's trying not to cry and he's trying he just was not succeeding he big cracked out tears and even he thought he hurt my feelings because i bought the kids um some snacks last night not last night I bought the kids some snacks while we were um, out of town from the pop shelf store and I bought him seaweed and the seaweed was too spicy for him and so he really thought he hurt my feelings because he wouldn't eat it and I was like you did not hurt my feelings like I ended up eating the seaweed I thought it was really good it's okay Lucas like it's it's okay he's all and then he texted me because he has a non-functioning phone but he has um capabilities on it that he can contact me if he needs to so it doesn't do anything it's not on a network but he can video chat with me and he can text me <clears throat> me and chris and my sister only and so um he even texted me from the other room he was really sorry that he hurt my feelings about the seaweed i was like you did not hurt my feelings so he was really just sensitive and he missed me all weekend and I told him, I said, I'm not going back out of town again. Like, I'm here. It's good. And so he was very emotional. So it took me a while to get him to go to bed, to get out of my room and go in his room and go to sleep. And he was scared because of the thunderstorm and all that. So while I was dealing with him, I was also crocheting. So I made a third one. <laughs> and again, I got to flatten it out. I made a third one and I'm going to make, I'm going to make one more. I'm not going to make five um because my niece is getting ready to go back to college and she's not going to be at the table you know so i'm going to make one for the immediate people that live here permanently so i'm going to make one more for probably little man because this one's probably gonna be juju's so i made three of those so this once again this is from crochet world august 2022 it is the hues of blue table mat from angela ader at her <clears throat> that is what I have done in the past seven days. It's a lot. I know that it's a lot. That's what anxiety does to me. It's like I just... So now I have a whole giant stack of cotton stuff, a pillow, <laughs> and a really cool watermelon bag. So, yeah. This week I'm going to take it easy. I don't know what I'm going to crochet. If I'm going to crochet at all, I might not. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm like I said in yesterday's video, it was not today's video. I'm in a lot of pain this week. 
So I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna rest. Well, rest in between working and taking people on errands and doctor appointments and all that wonderful stuff. And um, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you tomorrow with some yarn. All right. Bye, guys.